Hi guys, um, welcome back. Right, I'm just going to do another quick part on um, trying to get back into Duke Build. As I said at the end of last week, um, it's not really, you know, there's no point you watching videos of me smashing the keyboard to try and get things to work. So what I've done between last week and this week, um, and stuff was starting to come back in the last episode, so do watch that if you haven't already. Um, but uh, I did exactly what I would have done back in the day, which is look up some instructions. What I've purposely done is uh, avoid uh, looking up any YouTube videos of how to do it because I wouldn't have done that back in the day because YouTube wasn't there, video was a hard thing to have online, we're all on dial-up, uh, those kind of things. So I've looked up uh, actual HTML websites. And this first one I'm gonna show you, and I'm gonna put all these links in the description as well, obviously. Um, just to let you know behind the scenes, I've also got some shortcuts that I've set up in OBS Studio to hopefully make things a bit smoother for you guys as well and for me. Um, but So I'm just gonna jump into sharing my screen. There we go. Um, and this first website, I tell you what, this actually started ringing bells and I was thinking, did I actually um, even use this website or one extremely similar to this back in the day? Um, is there any for duke.net, how long's that been going? Maybe somebody knows, um, I could look it up, I'm sure, but um, I did see some dates, 2003, uh, it was up to my standards. April 2003, I started document mapping. Okay, so I wouldn't have used this exact website, but I tell you what, this looks so similar to ones that I did use back in the day, um, especially when you get into the actual areas of sectors and walls and stuff like that. So this is a really good one if you wanna uh, get on. And, and all I needed was a few prompters. And so I used that one, I used this one, which is um, on the eduke32 wiki, um, and also on the eduke32 wiki, just keyboard commands and stuff. And I actually found this very vindicating because as you'll see when we get back into doing the level, which we'll do now, um, I was so close last week with my attempts and there was just a few things that I was just not quite getting right that made all the difference. So um, let's get into it. So um, yeah, so so it was it was it was it was cool, cool to know that I wasn't that far off. Right, so I'm just going to fire up DOSBox and get you guys back in there. Here we go. So. Oh. Okay, and build. Okay, I do actually have another map saved um, because of where I've just been messing about and I, ha I really haven't done much to it, but let's just have a, a very quick look at crap two um, and, and jump in there and you'll see that I've got sort of separate zoning going on now, different ceiling heights, weapon textures, uh, weapon sprites, that's easy to do, um, and um, glass that can actually be shot um, from either side. Um, and some important things, so it was, it was, it was interesting knowing that, um, uh, looking up, okay, I know what the keyboard's commands do, but I, can I, I could clearly remember what it was I was trying to achieve. Um, and so even looking up, A, how to do the subsector, I was very close on that. But when I started playing about with windows, which I knew as soon as I worked out subsectors again, it was like, well, I, I know I use those to do the windows. And then I worked out how to apply the glass based on some of the keyboard commands I'd looked up, but I was able to walk through it. So there's other things I had to do. And just to give you a few pointers, you know, A, have a look at this. So the subsectors, as I said before, they come up red, not white. So I was 100% right in my memory of, of that being a thing. Um, and also, um, when you do glass, and I, what I did then, because it just wasn't working for me, I quickly jumped into the, the level of my old workplace that I've showed you guys before. Um, and so I just jumped in to see what looked different about that, especially around the glassed areas. Um, and I could see that they were purple um, and that they were bold. So that gave me another thing to, to help me on my trend um, of, of what to look up and, and how to make it work. So let's have a look at how I got here by loading where we were last week, which is here. Okay, so first and foremost, we've still got our lizard trooper and he's accidentally a one-sided sprite, so I'm gonna delete him. Okay, I'm gonna work quite fast here now. Um, now, one of the things I couldn't remember how to do was how to flip the texture, do you remember that? Why the heck did I not flipping well try F? 
because that's all I needed to do. <laughs> so there we go. And it goes through the different things. Okay. But the other approach I was trying to take was, and it was driving me crazy in the last video, was trying to pan across, trying to make the thing pan. Now, again, vindication, because if you remember, and I'm just going to do it on a different wall that I don't really care for messing up the tiling on. Okay, so I'm going to do the back wall here. If you remember, I was um, going, well, it's, it's, it's the numeric keypad to move them around, uh, to, to, to tile them, sorry. Um, but surely there's a keyboard combination, I seem to remember, to pan pan the texture. And I was trying to hold shift. And I also tried control and I tried out. But you can see that's doing the exact same thing. On looking up the instructions, you'll find it yourself when you look at those websites, when I list them in the, um, in the description, they say to hold down shift and use the numbers on the numeric keypad. And they specifically say it's shift plus eight or four or six or two. It doesn't work. Interestingly, even without holding shift, panning is the default on your floor tiles and also your ceiling tiles. So just a heads up on that, but not so much on the walls. <sighs> I kind of stumbled across this with numlock off now if i use the numbers which i did try turning numlock off you remember and i use the numbers and it still retiles it doesn't pan the tile but with numlock off if i hold shift and do the numbers that is panning see that that's panning the texture and that's exactly what i was after so it's numlock off so i'm a bit annoyed because really that's an incorrect instruction and it's on all the websites but that is not shift plus the numbers on the numeric keypad that is shift plus the arrows on the numeric keypad because numlock is off so they're not numbers i know i'm being picky but that's the way that instruction should be written okay if i so the other attempt i was going to the other approach i was going to take to this column here is if i hold down shift and tile that uh, and pan that tile across then there you can see i can end up with that that kind of a feel so that the pipe pipe work joins up so little things like that okay so let's have a quick look at um what was the other thing i couldn't do okay let's jump into 2d mode for a sec if you remember i couldn't um that looks like a box it's not it's my arrow in the corner i couldn't remember how to delete vertices that i'd accidentally created so let's have a look at how easy that is so all you do is and this was in the instructions i looked up you just grab a vertices, so here's my, here's my red pointer. I've just grabbed a vertices and I just drag it on top of another vertices that exists and it deletes the point. Do it again, delete that point. And then let's just go up the top here and I'm just gonna drag that one out so the wall's straight and get rid of that guy there. Easy peasy, so frustratingly easy. Right, I'm just gonna drag these out so that they um, match sort of the end of the room as it were. Could have zoomed out to do that easier. There we go, just so we've got some room to play with as we mess about, okay? All right, so that's that. Now, the other thing I couldn't remember how to do was subsectors, do you remember that? <laughs> again, frustratingly easy, because again, if you go back, you'll see me hovering, and in fact, this is how I ended up with this corridor, was because I accidentally sort of was trying to create it inside an existing wall and that's because and that was my memory working well because that's actually the easiest approach so look what happens let's, let's sort of retry that activity but we'll do it on this wall over here okay um, so I'm just going to insert because we worked out how to do that last week a couple of points here so I've inserted a couple of points now using one of those points I'm going to draw and I started doing this you, you watch it I started doing this and then I went no that's not going to work and I and I hit back um, and I got rid of that and then went to creating this column in the middle of the room which didn't serve me well at all watch let's recreate what I what I was on my path to doing and I should have continued doing if I hit space to start drawing a sector and I draw off this existing wall as soon as I join it back it goes red it's a subsector why is that so important? Let me show you. Because now that I've got that subsector there, what I can do is, if I hover where that subsector is, which is why I've purposely placed myself in the right spot, using page up and page down, I can now, oh, I was nearly not in the right spot, I can now bring that up. Oh, 
you have to make sure you're pointing in the right spot. Um, and what I'm going to quickly do, and what I can do, I can also bring the ceiling down quite easily. There. See, notice how that tiling's a bit off now. So you, you do sort of have to re sort of scale your tile. I don't like these walls anyway. We'll change those anyway. Um, but yeah, so that's that's how you do that. Um, let's give this a bit of a. Um, uh, okay. Oh, that could be quite nice. There we go. Um, and so sort of a bit of a point of light. And we'll do the same one there. Okay, so that's that's that. Um, let's have a look at quickly giving this room a bit more of a purposeful feel. Da, 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 da. I'm just going to go with some industrial stuff. Looks like a toilet, but never mind. Um, so again, you've got to really. I'm just going to pan that one. It actually needs to be resized. What I haven't found any instructions on how to do is how to resize slowly. So I do think that's just a, a speed thing as opposed to anything else. But anyway, um, and same tile there. So again, it's, it's good to sort of set the look and feel of your room. See, so and again, so that's that's totally off compared to the other ones. So uh, that's annoying. Uh, but yeah, you, you, could, you could go crazy. Oh, that's panning. That's fine. You could go crazy setting that up. You, you kind of get the point of, of, of how to retile the area. So the other thing I couldn't do was um, create. So that column, there is a way, because obviously you might want a subsector within the middle of an existing sector. So let's have a quick look at that. I'm just going to quickly. Um, do you like my sound effects? Um, I'm just going to quickly uh, change that to something more matching with what we're doing. There we go. That'll do. And pan that across. So that, there we go. Probably about there. Ah, but now, see? So I'll probably put the light source in the middle and stretch it a bit, maybe. I'll bring it down. Bring it not to three. Bring it down a bit. Nah, look, I'm being picky, but it, you know you can you can just keep going. Um, and just continue across there. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll stop now. I promise. Uh, but I do want to change the floor, which won't take me long. Da -da -da. There we go. That looks a lot nicer, and we will. I don't. And I want to do this before I start splitting this up into sectors. So, and we'll put some more drain pipes and stuff here. Here we go. Uh, uh, I can't help but yeah, move things where I, I don't like them. And you, you, you go on and on and on. Okay. Right. So that's that. So it looks like a scene from Saw. Um, <laughs> don't know where I'm going with this. Okay. Let's say I wanted to create a little bit of a bench here in the corner here, okay? So just, just down here. So I'm gonna jump into my build mode and I can draw a sector just like I did last week. So I wasn't going crazy, you can do it this way as well. But it does need to be a subsector. Okay, sector's created. If we look at it, it's a column in the middle of the room. We don't want that. So. If I right click inside it and then go out S, turns it into a subsector. So there we go. So now I've got another subsector and that I can raise up out of the floor. And I could texture that to make it look like a bench. Um, and yeah, off you go. You can rotate textures as well. Mm. Can't remember how you rotate them if they're on an angle. But anyway, yeah, probably made a rock from my back there. Um, okay, let's throw a, what's going on? <laughs> They're everywhere. Uh, okay, have I, got a, have I got a shotgun in there as well? Nope, nope. This is actually the shotgun I was after. Um, so we'll hit a sprite. Oh, oh hello. Hello, ladies. Um, let's hit V and... Up to the top. Grab the shotgun, which is entirely the wrong size, and we'll bring it down. You have to be careful, you have to move the cursor with it, otherwise, you end up 
changing the tile on the back wall there. There we go. Right. Um, now on that quick demo, I actually I actually did a window here. I'll show I'll show you how I did that as well. But it be it would be nice to do the same thing here actually. So that this shotgun is encased in glass. What do you think? So what we would do is we would go. Okay. So pointing at this wall, we press M for masked. Okay. Puts that on it. Now, um, so it kind of fills the gap with something, but you'll notice that I can actually pass through that. Okay. So we don't want to be able to pass through it. So I then, I press B. Ah, oh, let's have a look in 2D view first of all. So mast should be, oh no, so mast doesn't change the color. Sorry, mast doesn't change the color. Leading us all up a garden path. But if I press B, that line is now purple, which means it's blocked. Yes, I think that's right. Yeah, so I can't pass through it. So purple means it's blocked, okay? Now, if I press H, it's solid. That basically means I've set the hit um, scan of it, which means I can shoot it. I think that's I think that's basically how, how it works. Um, if I press V now, and I choose a texture that we can see through. Um, so there's a glass texture, which is obviously perfect for this. Uh, where is she? There we go. Boom. Now we can see through that. Now you do have to do each side. So I've got three sides here. And these two, I'm going to try and make them so that I can see through them, but I can't walk through them and I can't shoot them. Um, and I'll give them a grid of a grid. So it sort of teases at where the weapon is. So, um, so we'll do the M for the mask. We'll do the B for the block, but I won't do the H for the hit. Okay, and so we'll now choose the texture, and this texture I'm going to have be just like a grate that you can look through. So anything with pink you can see through. So there we go. That's sort of a, a bit teasing, um, and I would have to rescale that obviously to make it fit. There we go, something like that. It's changing the t scale of the whole column, so do be aware of that. Um, bit annoying actually because there's no, there's no. Actually, that one doesn't quite work unless I can remember how to rotate it, which I can't, um, because it's sort of going into nowhere at the edge there. God, I do get fussy, don't I? Let's pick another one. Yeah, that would be fun, uh, but no. Um, oh, what about that? Is it the texture that makes it shootable? Mm, that may actually be the case. I may be talking crazy. I do know I had to do the H and the B. I see that grid. Let's try that grid. Um, let's try that. Let's try that. That's more what I had in mind in the first place. I'm pretty sure I set it up right actually, because this is how. This is very similar to how I did the um, uh, the office partitions in my in my other thing. Can I see through the other side of that? No, and I can't go through. Okay, that's good. I can't pass through that. Okay, that's good. Um, so V there. Nope. Mask it. Block it. Don't do the hit scan. And we'll give that that. And that one looks fine there. There we go. So I've got a bit of a glass box there. Um, I'm, I'm getting a tease of the fact that there is a weapon in there, but I can't get to it until I shoot the glass. Shoot the glass. Okay, right. Let's have a look at how I would do a window into another area. Okay, so just have a look at the time. We're nearly 20 minutes. Okay, right. So you can join sectors together, um, and that in turn can create your subsector. So I would go, if I wanted a window here, hit insert here. Insert here, insert here, and insert here. Now if I go space to start drawing a sector, join those two together, join that together, join that together, 
complete my loop, and there we go. That turns that into a subsector, and now that's an open corridor. Okay, so if I hover over the floor here and bring that up, then I can start bringing up. Let's be very precise with your movements here. Right, so I'll bring that up, and then it's actually easier to just touch the sides here to bring the ceiling down. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so a little window, little viewport there, and again, same thing. So I would go mask it, and I'm going to go block and hit, because I'm going to do this as a window again, just to be quick. And put my window in. Now what you'll notice about this window is, and this is optional, um, but the window is only on one side of that sector. It's on that on that one line. Um, doesn't automatically fill both. So it's optional. I, I could choose to have it a single or I could make it into double glazing by doing the same thing both sides, but I don't need to take you through that. Okay. Right. Why else are subsectors so important? And, and look, this is all just me sort of going through. The fact that I remembered it, it, what needed to be done to, to do, you know, um, good mapping as it were, um, and actually put all the effects and stuff in that I wanted to. So if I join these vertices together, that's automatically created a subsector, and I'll explain why I would do that. Let's join these two together, that's created another sub subsector, and let's join these two together, that's created another subsector. Why in the world would I want to do any of that? Well, because now look, if I step back here, what I might want to do is bring the ceiling height down there, because we're going into a bit of a corridor, so it doesn't really make sense that it's the same height as the main room, and I might want to sort of add, start to add a bit of um, sector shading there, because we're starting to lose the light of the main room. Um, and this is part of what I sort of started to fail to do in the other one. So let's bring this down to the same height here. You kind of get the idea. I'm going to go even darker now. Remembering to do the other side. Okay, and then this one's got to come right down as well. Oh, so you can see how you can do that as well. Uh, let's bring that. So let's bring the floor down, um, and we'll do bring that even darker. Because we're really going around a corner there into a hidden area. And again, remembering. But you can set the light and dark as well. You can set the light and dark of a sector. Now I think it's by, and I want to test this actually, I'm going to bring the ceiling darkness right down, and I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that's what brings the sector darkness down as well. Oh, now have a look at this. This is the sort of thing I would bother to do as well, in all honesty. I've got a window here, so watch this. Um, I would go, personally, um, I would, um, now I would, basically what I'm going to do is, just to explain, I want to cast some light from that main room into this corridor here, because, yeah, because <laughs> it would be there. So I'm going to, um, from these vertices here, cast some light to, just across that corridor. So I need to create another subsector for the same effect. So I'm gonna insert a point here, just sort of thinking about how light would travel, not being perfect, because I'm kind of rushing it. Um, and I'm gonna put a line there. And similarly, I'm gonna put a line there. And you'll see there's a, there's a bit of a restriction as to what you can do, because at the end of the day, it would be a certain portion of that opposite wall um, here that would actually be in light, but you know we, we can't do that, so we're, we're doing the best we can. There we go, lighten that up. And there we go. There we go, what do you think? So that's coming through from the main room there. Now, I wanna sort of bring this reel down because well, just by doing that dark, and I'm just gonna put a, a sprite here 
that's not the sprite key. I'm just going to put a sprite here. Right, whereabouts is that sprite? Yeah, he's in the dark area. I want to see if that sprite takes on... Actually, I don't want that sprite. I want... Let's pick on something a bit more. What about that? Nope. Let's pick whatever the lead is, possibly. Jeez, where are they? All right. There we go. How about you? All right. Whoa, hello. What's, what's, what's happened there? We've uh, entered into the end of Dude, Where's My Car? Okay. Flattering. Stop. Oh. Oh. Right. Stop. Ah. Okay. She's gone short now. Oh, flipping egg. Okay, that'll do. That'll do. Because I want to see if she's now in the dark. She's just lurking in this in this back corridor somewhere. Um, okay, another couple of things you can do, just to make you aware. You can use the um, square brackets to slope floors. So, for example, I could do that. I'm not going to do it down that corridor. Too many subsectors now. Um, but I could I, just to show you how it works, uh, and then I'll put it back. So you do that, and you can see it's sloping downwards now. And of course, if I did that, you, you'd sort of be wise to do the ceiling in the same way, so that the two slope down together. But notice any subsectors that haven't been adjusted are going to then be another thing that you've got to adjust. So be aware of that. I'm not really. This isn't meant to be a tutorial, but yeah, I'm just sort of. Some of you may take up doing stuff after after I've been through this. So, um, so yeah. That's what I'm sort of talking in that way. So yes, you do be aware of that when you do that. Um, okay, um, you can also paste sprites onto a wall. Nope, that's not what I meant to do. So if I press S while pointing at a wall, that will actually paste a sprite onto the wall. So now if I give that a texture, that's basically ornamental. Um, another way is you can point at a sprite and press O, and it will actually... Um, Again, turn it into an ornament, um, as it were. So there we go, that's how I could put a screen on the wall. I'm not sure why there would be a screen there going down a dark corridor, but today there is. Now, how do I move it down? Don't actually know. Aha, uh -huh. page down, of course. There we go. Okay. So that's how you can do pictures on walls and, and things like that. Um, there we go. There was one more thing I wanted to do, um, simply because it's another cool thing. And for outdoor areas, which we really don't have here. So what I'm going to quickly do is very, very quickly zoom right out. Let's create a massive arse area. But not there. Let's do it a bit closer. Right, massive arse area. It's still only going to have our wall textures. Don't really care what sort of shape it is right now. It's, 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 ah, it's not, it's not the right shape, but that's fine. Okay, get rid of that extra vertices. Okay, right, where are we? Can't seem to move within that sector. That's interesting. No, it exists. Um, all right, um, let's bring up the ceiling height. Okay, now watch this. I'm going to hit V, and I'm going to choose a sky texture if I can quickly find one that looks like a sky. There we go. There's space, or there's that, or there we go. That that one will probably do. Um, these, I think, are more cityscape stuff, um, and that. Uh, oh, there's that. It's sort of space station-y. Oh, these, ah, there we go. That's quite nice. 
Um, shall we go for that? We'll go for that. All right now, it doesn't look anything like what we we're just looking at. That's correct. Press P, turns it into parallax. Um, now, interestingly, that's not going to work, is it? Because there's, there's too much of it in view, and it's it's not really working. So we won't choose that one. We'll choose that one. That's fine. Um, we get we get the space bit of the view, and if if the walls were lower, then we'd also get the um, the surface, I guess. So I could bring those walls back down. Are we going to see some of the moon surface? No, we're not. Oh, well. okay, but fine. But yeah. So you can see that now looks like the space, and so if I go back over, it's now letting me walk in here, and we can join those two sectors up there by a corridor, which I'll probably do from inside here, to be honest, because it would make more sense. You see, hopefully you're seeing now that now that I've just had those few little pointers of, or well, this is this is what the keyboard commands are, and and the memory is is is, is back. Um, it all just comes together, bang, um, and I know what I'm I'm up and doing. So if I now do that, there we go. Um, and I would probably bring that down again, just to be a bit more of a doorway than just an open space. And trying to make the door heights realistic is is key as well. Um, and there we go. I'm not going to get into today how to do swinging doors. That gets into sector effectors and all of that kind of thing. Um, uh, but yeah, it's, it, it is what it is. It's um, it's good fun. I uh, see there. If I did, oh, no, no, that's all right. I don't think I would do it. Right. Okay. Let's do some quick play test and just make sure that all works. Um, and then we're done because this is 30 minute video now. But yeah, I just wanted you to see that. Once I knew what the keyboard commands were, it would all come rushing back. Um, so let's see if I can do two things at once, because what I want to do is I want to um, we'll escape and we'll save. Yes, I want to quit. And I yes, I want to save my changes. Right. Um, because if I can do two things at once, I can talk while we're loading this up and basically say, what I'll do from here is I'm going to just do some improvements to that level that I made back in the day um, and then take you around that again. So I might do another couple of quick videos just to, just to show you the approaches I'll take um, and what I, what it is I'm trying to improve. And then, But I won't take you through improving the whole map. I'll show you the end result when I've finished doing it I think that's what I'd like to do um, so we're, we're working in total crap and let's load that up there is a way to play test from within the build but I found it was crushing um, crashing um, the editor yesterday when I tried it so I don't know why um, so there we go so there's there's my level now in theory I can't shoot through this no I can't and I can't oh, it let me probably the sprite was too big so you'd, you'd fix that up. Um, you'd either make that sector bigger, uh, but you'll see that I, I can't. I couldn't shoot those side bits, but I can shoot the glass there. Um, and same here. Um, I can't walk through it, but I can shoot it. Um, and there we go. I can jump through it after I've done that. And see, she's darker now. I'm pretty sure I'm right in saying she's dark because the ceiling is dark. So the ceiling. I'm sure it's the ceiling. It's either the ceiling or the floor. I'll have to do some testing. Um, but one of them, you don't have to shade the whole area and you certainly don't have to shade the sprites within the area. Basically, it's how you shade either the ceiling or the floor that sets the shading for that for that sector, um, which is a really useful tip um, to know because it speeds up your process. And look, you'll, you'll see the lighting there is quite nice now. So we're in the main room, this is all light. We haven't really given it a reason to be light because we haven't played with the ceiling textures, but. Um, you know, it's, it's it's light in this main room, which makes sense because it's sort of a brighter tile. And then it gets darker as you go around the corridor. Um, and then it's lighter again because of the, the, the light coming in from the main room, from the window there, and then back into darkness again and, and, off, and off we go. Um, and then if we go outside, there we go. We can see that parallax texturing on the ceiling there. So, I'm not going to go and shoot the the, the young lady, um, but um, she's she's a fully shootable object. Um, there's nothing affects that. Um, so yeah, no violence towards women. Um, so there.
that's pretty much it. I don't think I've got anything else to add. Um, and pleasingly, I don't need to go looking for my mouse pointer at the end of this video. Um, if you enjoyed this, um, A, see if you spotted the um, sort of uh, retro movie reference um, in, earlier on in the video. Um, I'm going to be dropping certain things at certain points of the video just to give you another little thing to look out for. Uh, but also, yeah, just let me know if you've played about with Duke Editor um, and or if you're planning on playing about with Duke Editor, um, that kind of thing. And what you think I should do to improve that level that I built back in the day. I'd love your input. So go back and have a look at that, that video if you haven't already. Um, and just let me know what you think you would do if it was your level to improve it. Keep it in mind, it's very particular to an area that I worked in. Um, so I'm certainly not going to change the placement of things. I want it to be technically accurate. But cosmetically, what would you do to, to, to bring it um, uh, just make it look better and bring it on. I'm not going to do custom textures. I want to stick with the default textures. Okay. Thank you very much, guys, for watching today. Uh, that was good fun. It was just, as you can hear, n now that I, I started stuff, it was just bang, bang, bang. This is what you do and this is how you do it. So, yeah, that, that was good fun for me. Thanks.